Hello, this is iPod here, and I'm here to talk about、um, the reasons for how I choose the runes depending on what matches that I will go against.、Um, there are six different runes that I want to go over, and those are the only runes that I go on Teemo. Before I go get on there,、um, there is a Teemo book that I already made, and you can take a look. On, it's right under the description of the YouTube. There are 70 different matches that I typed in here, and what runes and what items that I go first, and summoner spells, and which summoner spell that I upgrade, and all that optional item stuff. All right, hopefully that helps you out. And so, there are six different runes. You press the attack, this one, Electrocute, and then Dark Harvest, Summonary, Phase Rush. And lastly, a grass and die. Those are the six different runes that I take. Now, let me, let's go through、uh, one by one. Press your attack first. It requires you to land three auto attacks.、Um, and it's good against the tanky champions like Orn, Maokai, Dr. Mundo. The reason is, or even Mordecai's Darius. The reason is, this one has the highest consistent damage out of all the runes that is given to the Teemo. Um, some of you may ask, hey, what about the lethal tempo? What about a concord?、Um, these two d o e s n t provide as much damage as press attack does. So that's why we go with the press attack. Yeah. Concord is more of like a sustain run, but it doesn't really proc that well. You have to land like 10 auto attacks or with the 8 auto with 1Q, stuff like that. And then lethal tempo, when lethal tempo is able to be proc, they can just back out too. Yeah. So. It's kind of difficult to use those two. Press attack is the best out of all.、Um, so, press attack against the tanky champions. Now, the next, the Electrocute. Electrocute has a high burst damage in very short period of time.、Um, it doesn't have as high damage as a consistent damage wise as a press attack does. It's a, the opposite. It, in a very short period of time, it has a high burst damage. And that's it. Which requires usually in the laning phase, it's gotta be a two auto attack at one Q. Or in the later stage, or you know, even in the lane, I guess, a one out of one Q. Ignite can be part of it. Gunblade, one mushroom can do it, you know,、uh, with the、uh, you know, two other p a r t of damages. So you just need a three different damages in general in order to just burst. And it's good against the squishy champions like a Queen Vein stuff. And I typed the Riven Ranked and Darius here.、Um, these are the cases that、um, they're not squishy, but you can still take it and then win the trades against them because <laughs> Electrocute has a really short cooldown. Like about, I, I don't know, like 30 seconds, 25 seconds cooldown. So every 25 seconds or 30 seconds in the laning phase, you can keep, give a、like、really high burst trade against these、uh, semi tanky champions like a Riven and Rankton or even Darius. And then in the, after the lane phase, like around the mid game, you can burst the squishy champions. So if they have like a full squishy team and the, you're, tank, you're facing a semi tank champion like Riven stuff, then I'd recommend the Electrocute. Yep. And here's an example. So if they, if let's say Riven or Rankton are about 20% or 30% under their turret, all right? And then each of the Teemo's auto attack or even Q is gonna take off 5% of their health. So if you land the three of different ones, then it will add up to 15%. They would probably calculate it that way. Oh, I can tank about three different auto attack from the Teemo and I can still survive. But this Electrocute is gonna make up another 5% to 10%,、um, depending on your level or item stuff. Yeah, 5% or 10%, it's gonna make that up and then it's gonna finish them. So it's a really good finisher rune, too. The enemy just d o n t expect that coming in. So it, it's really good. Most of the matches I did type on Electrocute. As you see, Electrocute, Electrocute, and even secondary choices, Electrocute, you know? Um, the reason why I typed the secondaries as Electrocute is like, for example, against a Cho'Gath. Okay, Cho'Gath is a really tanky champion. Of course, I'd recommend the press attack against that. But you can still go Electrocute if everyone else other than Cho is squishy champions. 
So like you can auto queue auto and kill their jungler, mid laner, or even bot laners. But only the Cho is the one that is tanky in the top that I have to face. Then I'd recommend the Electro Kid. And then just you can still do well in the laning phase with the Electro Kid against the Cho, by the way. It's just a later stage, it becomes harder to kill him with the Electro Kid compared to the press attack. But later stage, let's say, hey, Cho is just stacking the magic resistances. Let my ADC damage the Cho, and I'm just gonna kill a different champion in a later stage with the Electro Kid. So that's how the Electro Kid works. That's why most of the matches I type the Electro Kid as at least like a secondary choices. Yep. Okay, now the Dark Harvest. Um, Dark Harvest is uh, this rune. And um, I recommend it if you have a match that um, the matchup can go below half HP pretty easily. Like, easy match. It's gotta be a very easy match. A Garen match, Singe match, or even Orn match. Yeah. And the, and the second way is that it's if it's like the opposite, very, very difficult match, none of the runes fits, then I recommend that Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest is not really a laning phase type of rune. Every other runes do better than Dark Harvest. If you're looking to kill the Garen or Singe or Orn during the laning phase, I recommend the different runes. But Dark Harvest is like a rune that, oh man, even if I have a Dark Harvest, I can still crush the Garen and Singe and Orn. The only thing that I worry is in the later stage, if my team sucks, I have to 1v9 them. 1v, 1v5. I have to just do everything. Those are like, uh, I take a Dark Harvest. Yep. Usually when I'm smurfing, yeah, I take the Dark Harvest, by the way. <laughs> in, the, in the high tier, I usually never go Dark Harvest. Yeah. Pretty much never. Or the matches that I do not have an answer with the current runes. So Jace and Rise. Jace and Rise are like, if they are getting played by Ruka challenger stuff, challenger players, um, none of the runes actually work against them, then I think a Dark Harvest could be a good option. I, I'm not gonna use any of the runes during the laning phase. Why not take, uh, why not take the rune that's gonna be good in a later stage? Um, but I don't know if that is that great idea, but it's just my analogy is kind of that yep all right now next is summonary so dark harvest i just don't do all dark harvest i i re not recommend the dark harvest at all but i currently am still working on with this though yeah without playing the game um a lot of people would think that dark harvest is best on timo and e even i would think that way but um in reality during the game dark harvest is still, yeah probably the worst <laughs> it's so difficult to stack summonary it requires one auto tag or one Q um, to proc. It's very easy to proc. And not only that, it has a highest damage when you're only landing one Q or one auto, stuff like that. Because one auto um, kind of double double procs a summonary, bouncing it back and forth because of damage or time. And this one, I recommend it in like Pokey matches, like range matches generally, Kennen, Annie, or Nico, or even Kaylee, those type of like, uh, if any does all in, then Timo loses. But in a poke sense wise, you can somewhat go even by going summonary, or even a cannon match, or even a Nico match. Like you just want to poke these range champion. You don't want to like go all in, but just want to poke. That's it. Yeah. So those are the matches that I go summonary. Now the next match is a next one is a space rush. This one. Um, the way to proc the face rush is exactly the same as electrocute. And this one removes a slow and gives you the move speed. And I currently take uh, three different matches for this. Trindimir, Nasus, and Olaf. That's it. And I'd recommend the Darius match too if you're having a hard time versus Darius. Yeah, this is the best versus Darius if you're really having a hard time versus Darius. Because he also slows you down with the W. And you can remove that, you know, auto Q auto and just kite. It doesn't give you any damage. Um, no damage at all. No damage rune but you can survive from their slows like Nasus Wither or Olaf consistently throwing the Qs or a Trinimir uh, with the chicken. All right, so now next, the Grass Undying. Grass Undying can proc one, with one auto attack every four seconds when it's ready to proc. It does the damage with that auto attack, kind of like a summonary, um, but less damage though. And then Sustain. 
it gives you sustain. Now, this is the only rune that provides a sustain out of all the runes. So it's the safest. Well, except the phase rush. If you if you are, if you were to not talk about the phase rush, then safest rune out of all the runes, and it fits in almost every matches. But the reason why I did not put the Gressendine that much in my uh, Timo guide or Timo book here is because of this. The Gressendine. Oh, sorry, I gotta show in here. Yeah, this is the Gressendine. Is the safest rune, but it's not the best for late game or even mid game. So after the laning phase, you don't really use this rune during the mid game or late game. Uh, that's why. So, like, you can have a safe rune, but like, for example, let's say you're having aggressive dying versus a uh, singed or Garen. Yeah, you're being safe. You 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 did your lane well, but can you carry the game with that? The answer is like probably no. Yeah, Grandson Nine doesn't really provide you to carry the game. You cannot one shot anyone, or you cannot really consistently deal well damage with the, like a press attack does, or you cannot like have a like late game god damage with the dark harvest kind of that kind of does. You just have a safe lane phase. That's it. So the only two matches that I get um, the Grandson Nine are gangplank match. And Malphite match because without having a grass and dying against these two, it's very difficult to survive the lane because they have a like really high poke and pretty good sustain. So, yeah, grass and, grass and dying against those two, that's it. And I don't really take much against the others. Um, but I see in op.gg's website, um, a lot of team of players do take grass and dying. Uh, against almost every matches and it does fit yet uh, you'll have a hard time carrying the game with it yeah it's easy to solve the lane but hard to carry the game so that's that's about it uh, if you're new to the teemo yeah sure go with the grass and dying or even someone probably these two are the top two most the best for a new teemo players just to get used to it and then when you get used to it then try out like a press attack like tokyo and you know different runes um so that's how I choose the runes depending on the matches and I'll talk about the item sets in the next guide. Alright, thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Leave a comment um, if you have any questions or you know or anything to talk about. Thank you and see you next time. Bye. -bye.